So you should have either a piece of paper out on your desk or you should have the review guide. Remember your test is tomorrow. So we're gonna go over AKS 38 today. So given the function m of x and given the function n of x, which of the following statements is true? So when you have one of these, you're gonna go into Desmos and then you're going to plot it. So you're gonna say log of base three. And the way you do that, is you're going to hit keypad, you're going to go to functions, you're going to scroll down to log, and go ahead and just type that function in. Okay, you're going to do the same thing for the other function. Okay, and then you're going to compare these two. So based off of these statements, what do those two functions have the same thing? Do they have the same x-intercept, y-intercept, or do they have the same horizontal asymptote? Yep. They have the same y-intercept. So on your review guide, you're going to have the same y-intercept. Okay. So when you're given two functions and you're asked to compare, you're going to make sure that you plug it in to your Desmos graphing calculator. Thanks. And you can grab a chair from next door if you want. And then compare the two. OK. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the next one. All right, so this notation on this one, it says the function h of x is graphed below. So which of the following represents the inverse of h? So this is read as the inverse function of h. OK, so looking at this graph, how do we figure out what the inverse function is? Take a point and flip it. All right, so my favorite one to flip is always the y-intercept. So right here, this point is 0, 1. So if we take it and we do the inverse, that means I'm going to have what? 1, 0. So the inverse of this is going to be 1, 0. That means that if I take the x value 1, If I take the x value one and I plug it into one of these, I should get zero, okay? So if I take this one over here, this log of one half times one, we're gonna go into our crafting calculator and we're gonna type it in. So we'll do log of one half times one. And that's not gonna give us zero. Let's try the next one log of one half raised to the X. Still not gonna give us anything. We try the next one, log of base one half of one. So log of base one half, oops. Make sure that you use your parentheses on these. Log of base one half. Of one, does that give us zero? Yes. Okay, so let's check that last one. This is log of base one half of two to the first power. So same thing. log of base one half of two to the first power. That gives us negative one. So which is the only one that would give us zero? This third one, right? So coming back to my review guide, it would be this one right here. Now you could have picked any other point, but you've got to make sure that it's exact. Okay, so like for instance, negative two, four. 
that would be exact, okay? So again, what I did on this is I said, they're asking for the inverse. I picked a point, I switched the points X and Y values, and then I plugged in your X value to get your Y value. All right, so Harriet graphs this function, ln of x plus six minus five, and determines that there is an asymptote located at, and are we talking about horizontal asymptotes or vertical asymptotes? Are we talking about vertical or horizontal? If we say x equals, that means we're graphing this way. If we say y equals, that means we're graphing this way. So remember, x equals means that it's a vertical asymptote, and y equals means that it's a horizontal. So looking at our answer choices, which one are we looking at? A vertical. OK, so let's go ahead and plot this. x plus 6. Coming into Desmos again. So when I graph this and I zoom out just a little bit, where's my vertical asymptote? Negative six, okay? Another way that we could have told that without actually having to graph it is look at the equation. Right here, there's that plus six. So inside the parentheses, if you change the sign, that'll be your vertical asymptote. So that would be X equals negative six. So you can do it from the graph or you can do it from the equation. All right, looking at AKS 38 number four, the growth in a cellular phones in the United States between 2000 and 2020 in millions can represent, be represented by this function and is graphed below. Let t equal zero represent the year 2000. Which of the following statements are true regarding the graph? Select all that apply. So I want you to take a second. I want you to read over, read over these options. And I want you to try to figure out which one is your answer. So I'm gonna pause this. All right, so looking this over, the first statement says in the year 2000, which the year 2000 is on this axis right here. The number of cellular phones in the US was 10 million. Is that a true statement? Yeah, okay. On B, it says the number of cell phones tripled within 20 years. So from the year 2000 to the year 2020, we went from 10 million to 20 million. Does that triple? No, that's a doubling, right? So that's wrong. On C, between 2000 and 2020, the growth was a constant rate of change. If I have a constant rate of change, what type of function do I have? Linear, is that what we've been talking about? It's not linear, right? So that's not true. By the year 2015, so that would be here, the number of cell cellular phones had exceeded 15 million. So is this number right here larger than 15? Yeah. And then the cellular phone growth rate is between 3% and 4%. How do we go about figuring that out? How do we figure out what our rate is? Well, let's look back at our equation. Yes. Um, so when we're using those exponential functions, so he's talking about when we're talking about like equations like these type of deals, right? 
and we can figure out our rate from there. But if we already have the simplified form, in order for us to figure out what our rate is, we're going to look at our equation. What's this 10 actually equal? What, is, what does the 10 represent? Hmm? <clears throat> where is this 10 coming from? When I write this equation, where is this 10 coming from? Well, what's our initial amount? 10. Okay, so 10 is our initial amount. What does this E equal? Hmm? No, those are inverses of each other. Okay, so if I told you that E equals 2.71, so let's just substitute in 2.71 into this equation. And then what is this 0 0.035 T? What is that? Time, but why did they do 0 0.035 times time? Okay. Okay, so let's look at it this way. Let's take it and let's plug it into Desmos and look at the table. Okay, so from here to here, from this Y value to this Y value, how much did it increase by? Like 0.35, right? Okay, so when we do this, when we plug this into our calculator and we go, hey, our Y value, 10.356197 divided by 10, what's that rate? 1.035. Do you remember that equation where we have A times one plus R raised to the T? Okay, well, if we take 1.035 and subtract one, what's our rate gonna be? Okay, and 0 0.035 changed to a percentage is what? 3.5%. So coming back to our review guide, it said the cellular phone growth rate is between three and four. Is that a true statement? It's growing by 3.5%, so that's in between. So we're gonna have this as our answer, this is our answer, and this one as our answer. The functions 10 to the x and log of x are inverses of each other. What else do they have in common? Well, if we're ever unsure, what are we gonna do? Lug it into Desmos. So we're gonna go 10 raised to the x and log of x. Okay, so what do they have in common? Well, let's go back to our list. Do they both increase always? Mm, they both are increasing. Okay. What about the horizontal asymptotes? They have horizontal asymptotes. Do both of them have horizontal asymptotes? No. Okay. What about x-intercepts? Do they both have the same x-intercept? No and they're both logarithmic. Well, that's not true because one of them is exponential. So let's cross out the ones that are wrong. So what are we left with? They're both always increasing. Okay, on the next one, it says Georgia graph the function. Which graph represents her work? So if we don't know, what are we gonna do? Plug it into Desmos. 
So we're going to come in here and we're going to do ln of x plus 5 minus 3. Okay, so we have a vertical asymptote at negative 3. I'm sorry, at negative 5. So looking back at our answer choices, which of the following looks like this? Well, it's not A, it's not B, it's not C. So again, looking at that vertical asymptote and seeing where it kind of like tapers off just a little bit. All right, so go ahead and take a moment and read over this next question and tell me what you think the right answer is. Okay, so it says, explain why the point 27, 3 is on the graph. Okay, so point 27, 3. Explain why that's on the graph. Well, if we have log of base 3 of x and we plug in 27 into this, What's another way of saying this? All right, well, first of all, what would this equal? Well, if we're unsure, we're going to plug it into Desmos. So that equals three, right? Okay, so coming back over here. Three to what power gives me 27? Three. Three to the third power equals 27. Okay, so we can see from log of base three of x that we could solve this out. Okay, what's the x-intercept of this graph? So what's this point right here? One comma zero, right? And then how would we know that? Well, log of base three of one would equal zero. Three to the zero power equals one. Do you see how I can flip flop those? All right, the next question says, when will the graph meet the line y equals four? So when will this line equals the line y equals four? Well, let's think about it. Okay, so log of base three of X, and we're trying to see when that equals four, right? You could plug it into your calculator and you can see where it crosses. You might be there for a hot minute though, right? Because we could also do it the exponential way. Three to the fourth power equals X. So what's three to the fourth power? 81. So at when x equals 81, your y is going to equal 4. So at the point 81 comma 4. So that's what I'm saying. It might be a little bit easier to go ahead and write it as an exponential rather than looking at your graph. Okay. All right. So the value of a particular used car has been decreasing at the same rate each year since 2005. The equation 40,000 times 0.81 raised to the t represents the value of the car in dollars as a function of t, the number of years since 2005. Sketch a graph of c. So what I personally do is whenever they ask me for sketching a graph, I'm gonna plug it into Desmos. Okay, one thing that you need to make sure that you're paying attention to though is this graph. It's gonna be a little bit off. It's gonna be like over to the side. Okay, so you need to make sure that you zoom out. So we got 40,000 times 0.81 raised to the T or raised to the X. Okay, so 
at the year 2005, okay, at zero years, where should I start my graph? Well, at 40,000, right? Okay, so when I plug in zero, that's gonna give me 40,000, okay? Between 2005 to 2010, how many years are there? Five years, right? So I'm looking at when X is five, that would be equal to 2010. So coming back into my Desmos, when X is five, my Y value is 13,947. Okay, so I'm gonna plot that on my graph. So, roughly 14,000, right? Which is right about here. What's the distance between 2010 to 2015? That's another five years, right? So that would be when X is 10. So coming back into my Desmos, I can plug in when X is 10, what's Y? It's roughly 5,000, right? I'm gonna come back in here, roughly 5,000. And we can see how it'll level off just a little bit, right? When they ask for a sketch, I would sketch maybe or plot two or three points and then just kind of follow the trend, okay? 